So in order to do this you have to add some script parameters and there are string parameters and there's three of them. So what I'm going to do is go add script parameter string. I'll bracket quotes. This is the first line of the crier's message. This is uh, so when when a crier speaks, he always speaks two lines. So every time you inject a message into his queue, he can you can you can inject two two lines per message. Um, and usually, what I do is like you know, um, at noon today. Um, or actually, better, you know, hear ye. And if I spell that right, hear ye, hear ye. You know, that could be his first message, and we'll just copy that. You know, at noon today, the town vaults were plundered. That's it. That's his. That's his message. So um, when I when I have a script that you know checks to see if the town vault was plundered, all I have to do at the bottom of that script is uh, is run these two things. I can have another one, and I'm going to leave that one blank, and I'll explain what that one is in a moment. And then I do an execute, uh, I believe it's execute script enhanced, script enhanced, open bracket quotes, and I want to run this script, leg underscore info underscore prior add quotes comma object, whoops object self. I had to look that one up because uh, I don't use it very often. So uh, there it is. These are the four lines of code I would need to inject a message into all my criers queues. So every crier that I have in my world will get this message injected into their queue when I when I run these four lines of code. So uh, in my script somewhere, you know, if a uh, if a particular uh, chest gets looted, or if someone discovers an area, or you know a big uh, event occurs, uh, I fire off my script that does these things, and all my criers get it. Anybody in those towns that are standing near those criers, um, or when a crier spawns, when someone enters the town, the crier will start reading off his queue, and anything that's in there will get uh, will get sent. He only he only reads his queue once every minute too, by the way, just so you know. So there's his uh, messages. Now I'm going to explain what this third parameter is for. This parameter is useful if I only want to inject this message into one particular crier. So the the entry that I put in here is the actual unique name that we configured when we created our crier. So that uh, you know that cobalt cave crier that we made earlier. If I put that in here in the third uh, add parameter string. Only that crier will get will get this message injected into them. The other criers in the world won't speak anything, so that's kind of useful if you want to simulate, um, you know, an event happening in a particular town, but the other towns don't know about it or something like that. Uh, so it's useful if you only want to use uh, choose a particular crier. Now, of course, you can change these. These are just regular strings. You can have whatever you want in here. You know, you can put together a particular time, you know, how I hard-coded the word noon in here, I can, you know, uh, create, um, you know, a variable that says, you know, uh, current time, something like that, and have this current time be, you know, some code up here that creates that variable that figures out the current time, or, you know, that the event happened, things like that. I can, I can do all kinds of interesting trickery, I can read some variables out and inject those into as messages. But the the point is is that running these three um, uh, parameter strings and injecting them with some text and then calling this crier add is how I go about putting messages into a crier's queue. Uh, like I said before, some um, events that some other plugins will already do that and uh, we're going to demonstrate that right now. The built-in one, I'm not going to I'm not going to use that little script at all. But what I am going to do is I'm going to bring back our little Cobalt King here. And we're just going to throw him over here. So one example of one of the built-in um, events that can cause a crier to add, and 
actually I didn't really want to lay him yet I just I really wanted to modify his blueprint but oh well it doesn't really matter for this it's just demonstration purposes all I need to do is add a uh, a variable to this guy uh, and it will leverage the built-in um, um, crier and the variable is called leg underscore info underscore crier add my death and this is in the documentation by the way so I'm not doing anything that you'll have to really try and remember you just uh, read the documentation it'll it'll show uh, a little bit more about this. So this variable, if I have this variable on a creature um, and I'm using you know that custom death script and I put this variable on a creature any criers that are in my world will find out about this guy's death. So I'm gonna click OK on that and I'm gonna save this and run it in game and uh, see what happens. Okay so uh, we're back in game and I might have put that cobalt a little bit too close He's uh, he's attacking me right away, so I'm just gonna go over here and uh, defeat the yeah. Cobalt King if I can. There we go. The Cobalt King has been defeated, of course, because that was uh, from our previous uh, info message. And now we'll walk over here, or anybody else that happens to be in town. If this guy was in town, of course, um, we'll be standing around the the. Um, Crier. Now, every crier in the game now will that we have configured will uh, have gotten a message injected. Now, again, he only checks his queue once every minute, so it could take a few moments before he'll actually speak anything. And um, just so you know, uh, when I was demonstrating the the scripts earlier, um, I wrote in the very first message, "Hear ye, hear ye." Uh, one thing I forgot about is that the crier always starts his message with hear ye hear ye and there he goes he just does that that's that's not included um, that's not part of the two messages this one here is one is the first message of the two lines and this one here is the second message of the two lines so as you can see uh, when we look over here in the local chat uh, he says hear ye hear ye that's that's not that doesn't go against one of your two lines he they always do that um, in a future release I may give you a checkbox to turn that option on and off but for now uh, with hear ye hear ye and then the two messages that get injected uh, so again um, at 1 16 p.m. on June 1st 1372 which is the time that in game that I happened to, to defeat that cobalt uh, Santa and Viper defeated cobalt king well done so these these are built-in messages um, into the info box so that's the only one that's built in when you get the info plugin itself. So if you're using the info plugin, there's one built-in uh, message, and that is when a monster dies. You can you can put that variable like I showed you uh, on any monster blueprint, and uh, with that variable and a crier configured, this is the type of message that you'll get. Again, you can customize it to have your criers do any kind of message you want, um, just by using those add script enhanced or add script variables and executing script enhanced uh, code. Again, criers are really an advanced topic for people who uh, can script custom events. Um, but as you can see, uh, once you once you have your event uh, scripted, they're fairly simple to have these criers. Uh, you know, announce announce things around towns without using the shout channel. You know, it's a it's a good alternative to not using the shout channel if you want. And that's the last item of the info plugin. Um, I hope this video or these uh, videos help um, with the installation and the use of the info plugin. And uh, if you have any questions, you can contact me in the methods outlined in the documentation. Okay. Thanks for watching.